Hey, Future Respiratory Therapist Coach here with you. I got another message for you. Uh, this message um, is prompted by a question I received from uh, what I assume is a young lady by the name of Courtney. And she was working the other day, I think, at uh, during clinicals, and she had a patient that was air trapping. So she um, said she attempted to fix the air trapping by performing an expiratory hold, which is an initial first thought that would be correct okay because if you understand your air trapping you do understand that that's happening on the expiratory side of things okay um, the other thing was that the patient was in PRVC so the question is is uh, I tried to do an expiratory hold but it didn't fix the air trapping and that the answer is is you're right it, it didn't fix the air trapping because an expiratory hold is not something that we do to correct air trapping it's something we do to assess air trapping. If a patient is air trapping, they are going to have an increased amount of intrinsic PEEP, okay? That's above what you have set on the ventilator, okay? So you do an expiratory hold. When flow ceases, the two valves are gonna close. It's gonna do an assessment of the baseline pressure. And if the baseline pressure is 12, and you have a PEEP set of eight, then you understand that you have four centimeters of water pressure of intrinsic PEEP. That's a direct result of your patient air trapping. Okay. And so while the expiratory hold is important when we're thinking air trapping, it's not the fix to air trapping. It's one of the tools we have to assess the severity of air trapping. Okay. So don't think expiratory hold as a cure. Think of it as a tool for overall intrinsic PEEP. Okay. Now, the other thing you said was your patient was in PRVC, so when the expiratory hold didn't work, then the next move would be to decrease the eye time. And that is 100% the correct move, okay? If you have a patient that's air trapping, the E time that's allotted for them is not long enough for them to get all of the air out, and your next goal is to decrease your eye time. Now, remember, we're in PRVC. So PRVC, you have... A set target tidal volume, you have a set eye time, and then pressure varies to achieve that target tidal volume for that eye time, and flow will vary. So you cannot manage your flow setting in PRVC. You can only manage your eye time. Okay, so that is where you want to work from in PRVC to decrease air trapping is by decreasing your eye time. Now the other option you might could use is by decreasing your respiratory rate, when you decrease your respiratory rate, you're going to increase your total cycle time. Your eye time is set. So if you increase total cycle time, you increase E time. For example, if you're set on a rate of 20, you have an eye time of, let's just say you have an eye time of one second. <clears throat> okay? And you're set on a rate of 20. Your total cycle time is three seconds. Now I got that by dividing 60 seconds by a respiratory rate of 20. The ventilator is going to give 20 breaths per minute. And it's a machine, so it's gonna do it very systematically. Oh, 20 goes into 60. I'm giving a breath every three seconds. That means a breath is going to start, inspiratory is gonna happen, expiratory is going to happen and then exactly three seconds later the next breath is going to start okay now if you were to take that respiratory rate turn them from 20 to 15 then that would have four seconds total cycle time which means one second for inspiration in this case one second and three seconds for exhalation. If you turned it down to 10, you would have 60 divided by 10 is six seconds total cycle time. Now you have one second inspiration, five seconds exhalation, which would probably be sufficient for most of our patients. Now the problem with this strategy is, is you have got to be very in tune with your patient's ventilatory requirements, okay? Their minute ventilation. What is the required minute ventilation they need to sustain a normal blood gas. Okay, and when I say normal, I mean normal for them. Okay, if a patient lives at 65, a, P a CO2 of 65, and you're trying to keep their CO2 at 45, or you're messing up, drop their rate and give them a longer total cycle time, right? Let their CO2 go back up to where they live. But if your patient is needing a minute ventilation of 
I don't know, let's just say let's just say 10 liters a minute to maintain a normal blood gas, you probably can't can't afford to take your rate from 20 to 10 because your patient's going to become uh, acidotic due to a rising CO2 as you drop the respiratory rate. Okay, so you got to know your patients on that front. Um, I time in this case is the best option to try to um, fix the air trapping. The other option you have is is if you let's say you do an expiratory hold and you do get a, a 12 simmers of, of water pressure. Okay, is your baseline, but you only have eight simmers of water pressure set. Okay, if your patient has COPD or emphysema and they're dealing with distal airway collapse, okay, it's maybe worth a shot of increasing your PEEP setting from 8 to 12 to see if you can stent those airways open and that will allow more uh, gas to leave during the expiratory phase, prevent that airway collapse, overcome um, um, that airway resistance and that airway collapse and, and result in less air trapping. Okay, so at the end of the day, I think you did the right thing. Understanding that expiratory hold is not your solution. It's your tool to help figure out what the problem is and how severe. Decreasing your eye time in this case is probably your best option. Okay, I hope this helps. If it did, please give me a like, a subscribe, and a comment if you need more information. If it didn't help, leave me a comment and tell me why it didn't help. I'd love to clarify anything that doesn't make sense and I'd still love a subscription from you. So um, you guys go be great and uh, keep being awesome.